Okay, so my name is Karen Petrie. I suppose as of now, Professor Karen Petrie, but that still sounds really odd. So usually just Karen. And today I'm going to be talking to you about why attacks on sexism are not attacks on men. So I want to start by introducing you to this little girl. So this is me, aged about four and three quarters, on my first day of school. It's a 1980s picture, so apologies for the lack of resolution. But you can probably see that this is a little girl who's beaming with pleasure at the idea of going to school. By the end of her first day, she was finding it really difficult. I don't remember much about that, but I do remember my parents telling me that I really didn't want to go to school on the second day. Why was that? Well, I am dyslexic and mildly dyspraxic. So academia didn't come naturally to me at all. In particular, I really, really struggled to read. I still actually struggle to read sometimes, but now I've got coping mechanisms that allow me to cope. And so why am I starting my professorial lecture by talking about myself aged four and a half? Well, it's for two reasons. The first thing is I have the absolute joy of being a professor of algorithms in education. And one of the reasons I'm so proud to be in this field of education is because of all the educators who helped me to become a confident, outgoing individual who can read and who actually loves books. I'm wearing a dress covered in books because I really, really enjoy reading now. And actually, that is a miracle <laughs> given what I went through to get there. Also, I would have really liked somebody when I was about eight years old to tell me that the struggle was worth it that the fact that I was maybe reading books that are a bit younger than other people in the class, that writing with my dyspraxia was a real issue, was okay. The fact that actually that I, I was using technology to overcome these difficulties was actually where my career would lead me and become one of my advantages in life, not one of my disadvantages. So for anybody watching this who's dyslexic or dyspraxic, you can do it. And I want you to have this message from this presentation. A bit older now, I'm about eight years old, I didn't feel like a normal girl, whatever that may be. Why was that? Well, one Christmas, all I wanted was a mechano set. That's what I asked Santa for, was a mechano set. This is me and my sister on Christmas morning. And you can see my sister is breathing with pride, really happy with whatever she got from Santa. I don't look quite so happy as the older sister. And that's because I didn't get my mechano set. I got a doll's pram and my granny knitted a lot of clothes for me to put on my dolls. I'll be honest, I don't think my reaction to that was very good, so I'd like to apologise to granny for the fact that it didn't go down well. But at that point, my parents basically said to me, girls don't get mechano sets, girls get dolls. And it was at that point I kind of realised that maybe I wasn't the average girl and didn't want to be this average girl. So at that point, I really realized at the age of eight that gender differences not only occurred, but for me, they were already becoming a problem. So that's what I'm talking about today. I'm gonna to talk about why being in a gender minority in any group can be different, difficult. And in particular, I'm gonna talk about why this is not an attack on men, okay? So even if women are in the minority, and we say it's difficult to be in this minority, we're not attacking men, we're just acknowledging a truth. Throughout this talk, I will be speaking about two genders. I'd like to say up front that I acknowledge that there are far more than this. I'm keeping it to two genders really to keep the maths easy, because we're going to go through some mathematical examples in a while. The maths does work if there's more than one minority in the group, but it's a lot more complex. The statistics I've got, also only refer to two genders, and that's because of the way the statistics are um, sent to the Higher Education Statistics Agency. So I apologise now for only acknowledging two genders in this talk. There is a lot more, and I hope that nobody feels let down by this talk. In particular, I'd like to say the model works for all minorities, be it gender, sexuality, age, weight, for one that's not a protected characteristic. It works no matter what the minority. So, is there still an issue with gender representation um, throughout Scotland? The answer, I'm sorry to say, is pretty much yes. And it gets worse the further you go in your academic career. 
So as standard grades, which are school qualifications, are now actually replaced by national fives, still called standard grades in this chart compared to previous data. So at standard grade level, we see that biology has actually got the majority female and the men are in the minority. We also see quite a few subjects like chemistry where it's about 50-50. And then we come down to computing science, where it's about 40% female at that point. The best it ever gets, people, is 40% female. By the time you get to university as a computing student, you're looking to be about 20% female. And by the time we get down to professors, we're looking to be about 12% female. Now, in particular though, look across that scale and realize that professor gets very low in all of the sciences. Even in biology, if it starts really high, the percentages of female professors is under 20%. So in academia, in industry, we have this minority of females in most of our sciences. So this is why I came up with the Petrie multiplier. Now, yes, I did tell you earlier that my name is Karen Petrie. Yes, it is named after me. No, I'm not quite that big headed. I didn't call it anything. I told one of my colleagues and collaborators, Professor Ian Jens about it, didn't have a name, so he named it after me. So I've got Ian to thank for that. So it is named after me and I came up with it, but I'm not quite that big headed. That's the important thing to remember. So the Petrie multiplier is a thought experiment. Quite a lot of the newspapers reported on this called it a mathematical model. It is not a mathematical model, and that's an insult to my colleagues in mathemat mathematics who actually do mathematical models. It's at most a thought experiment. The multiplier shows that if the percentage of men and women in the room who make questionable remarks to the other sex is equal, and the percentage of women in the room is lower than the percentage of men, then the average woman experiences far more sexist comments than the average man. So if even if men and women make equally sexist comments, then you're still more likely to be insulted if you are in the minority. Now that's a lot of words explaining the, the maths. Let's actually look at some examples and see how this works in practice. So let's actually see how the maths works. So we've got eight green squares and eight purple triangles. So what we've got here is an equal balance of people at, say, a conference, filling around talking to each other. Unfortunately, some people are about to make sexist remarks. They're going to do this equally between the genders. So we can see that green square has insulted two purple triangles, not good. Purple triangle is also insulting some squares, again, not good. And this insulting carries on, and then we can see what happens. Well, what happens is that three purple triangles were insulted, and three green squares were insulted. So everybody's getting a fair play of the insults. We would rather win any, but at least everybody's experiencing it in the same way. Now let's change this to a minority situation. So now we're going to have 12 purple triangles and four green squares. So green squares are now in the minority. Again, assuming that people make in, of different genders make complaints the same, insults the same way, what happens? Well, we can watch this all play out. And we find out that at this minority, we have three green squares have been insulted, but only two purple triangles. An important thing to note is that the really unlucky green square has got actually three insults, whereas each of the purple triangles have got one each. So we're beginning to see that if you're in the minority, as the green squares are here, you're likely to get more insults. We can make this even worse, the situation, by reducing our minority even more. So at the moment we've got four green squares. What if we take it to two? At this point, we see that the following happens. Yep, you can see both green squares have got a myriad of insults. One's got four, one's got three. And at this point, only one purple triangle has been insulted, and that's it. So to summarize, in all the scenarios, about 25% of people were sexist, and the sexist people said two mean things. When we saw an equal number of triangles and squares, we saw that basically triangles and squares got insulted equally. The average number of insults per both was about 0.5. Get up to 12 triangles and the four squares, squares are beginning to be the minority. We see a bit of a difference now. So 
two of the triangles were insulted only once, but it's three squares, which is more. However, some were insulted multiple times. In fact, the average insults per triangle are only 0.167, and the average insults per square are 1.5. So you can really see a difference beginning to occur. If we make this even more of a minority, and we have 14 triangles and two squares, we can see that only one triangle is insulted, and only once. And the number of squares insulted is two, and every of them, each of them is insulted three or four times. And remember, there is only two squares, so everybody's been insulted at this point. The number of insults per triangle, on average, is only 0.07. For squares, it's 3.5. So by being in that minority, they're getting far more insults than they would if, if they were not. The actual maths is when the majority is n times larger than the minority, the minority receives n squared insults. Some of you who like your maths will get that. If you don't, it doesn't matter. You can see the numbers for yourself and see this is bad, right? So this is why attacks on sexism are not attacks on men. Even if both genders are equally sexist, any time you're in the minority, you will get the brunt of it. You will get the majority of the insults. And that's why we've got to talk about these issues and not think, because women are saying, I'm in the minority, you're attacking men. We're not. We're just saying, hey, guys, this is a problem. We've got to deal with it. I wanted to end on a more hopeful note than talking about the issues we have with these Pharisees and signs. So you remember back to my Christmas morning when I was miserable, I didn't get in the candle set. This is me eating my Christmas lunch a bit later on, still not very happy with the looks of things. I think I ruined everyone's Christmas. Sorry for that, family. However, when I was made a professor, my mum took me out for lunch. This is my mum sitting next to my husband. My husband gave me this mug, which now said I was a professor, and my mum gave me the mechanical set. And she apologised and said, when you were a little girl, we thought it wasn't appropriate to give you a mechanical set. That was ridiculous. The world has changed. Now it's OK to give everybody whatever toy they want. If I want you to take one thing away from this today, it's that it's OK to give everybody whatever toy they want. And the more we do that, and the more that we celebrate these differences, the better a society we will become. Thank you. <laughs>